In this video, we'll see how to use the Stripe elements directly into WeWeb to accept payments in your WeWeb app. The first thing you'll need is actually an app, a WeWeb app listing products that are coming from a backend. Here it's from Zano. When each of these products have their Stripe product ID and price ID inside Zano. To do this, you would refer to our previous video, but just as a reminder, products are a way to store product data into uh, Stripe and associate them with a price. So here, for the sake of this example, we use t-shirts that have a single price, so a single price ID. And each of them are stored inside the Zano database and are brought to WeWeb into a collection named products and then listed here as a collection list. So the thing we want to do is actually when a user click on, clicks on the buy uh, button is to redirect this user to a page where she or we, he will, able, will be able to pay directly entering uh, his payment details into the WeWeb app and then the transaction will be sent to, um, to Stripe. Sorry. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually um, go to the page I prepared for this example. Just remove this workflow because I will show you how to do it just after. But be sure to also have the Stripe plugin um, added to your project with API, uh, public and test API keys. Then the next thing we want to do is create a new page that we'll call payment form where we'll store like we'll that will display all the um, like the payment form from Stripe that we're going to use. And this will get a parameter called uh, client secret, which will let empty. We'll prepare this page just by adding a blank section and that will make um, take the full screen and center everything in it. OK. And then we'll add a form container into the page. OK. Just set the width as 100px, 100%, uh, sorry. Then remove the input, rename uh, the submit button to submit payment. And in the add panel, select Stripe and add the Stripe payment inside the form container. This is really important because you need the Stripe payment uh, to be handled by a form submit, which we'll do later. In the meantime, go back to your previous um, page. And here we'll create a workflow on when the user clicks the buy button. So go to workflows, new. And here we'll call it create payment intent and redirect. So what we'll do is that we'll tell Stripe to create a payment intent with the right product ID and the, the right price ID, sorry, and the right customer ID so that um, Stripe is able to generate a unique session for this specific payment, knowing who is the user and what he or she is going to buy. So we'll click on add an action and here we'll uh, create a payment intent. For the quantity, I let one. For the payment methods, you can select any one you want to uh, accept. Here, I will only let credit cards. And for the price ID, I will use the uh, Stripe price ID, which is entered in my product, which comes from Zano. So this is really important because actually you can have multiple prices and the user can select among them. So you need to bind, like actually store the price ID inside the products that you are bringing to WeWeb. And then for the customer ID, which is not required, but here we want to link the specific user to a specific customer ID inside um, Stripe. What we do is that we'll get this from our currently authenticated user. And why? It's because uh, in this project, we start Stripe customer ID during sign up inside the users in Zano. So if I go to Zano and I go in my user database here, you see that user, they have their like, customer ID which is required if you want to link your users, your, your app users to uh, Stripe customers. Then we'll test this 
uh, action and you see that my payment intent was created. So it's a big object that is created by um, Stripe that we'll use uh, to redirect. So now we'll use the navigate to action to navigate to our payment form page. So I will select the payment form and top of page and for the parameters client secret, I will bind it to the results of my previous action. And actually when we're creating a payment intent inside Stripe, we get back a huge object, but inside it, we have a client secret um, variable that is the unique ID of this uh, session that will be used by Stripe to recognize um, to recognize who is paying and what. So then click test and we'll get redirected to our payment form. Now, the Stripe payment here is not uh, displaying because it needs a client secret. So that's what we've done just before. So we can get back in the settings of this uh, element, the client secret and bind it to the variable we get from the current page because this um, idea was sent to the page as uh, like a parameter in the path. Now, you see that the form is displaying, but it can take quite, quite some time. That's why I rec recommend also binding the conditional rendering to the fact that this client secret is existing. And if you want to cast a variable as a true or false, you can use the exclam exclamation uh, mark two times. So here, if the client secret is declared, the conditional rendering will be true and the um, uh, Stripe element will display, otherwise it won't. Now, because it's a test uh, form, we can use the Stripe uh, test card to uh, test the payment. But the thing we can do, uh, it's actually an optional um, uh, step uh, here, but we will create also a checkout uh, page so that when the payment is done, we can get back the details from this payment and display some stuff to the user saying like your payment succeeded or uh, it happened or yeah, many data about this payment. So to do this, I will create a new page that I will call payment uh, success, which is empty. And what we'll do for now is only add a blank section that will make also 100% wide and 100VH. And we'll add a heading We'll center this heading. And for now, we'll let it like that. Okay. Now let's go back to our Stripe elements page. Click on preview, check that it works. So it's redirecting me to the payment form. The payment form is appearing because I've got my client intents. So now the thing that I wanna do is actually on the form container and not on the submit button, create a new workflow that will um, happen when the form is submitted. So when someone is trying to do a payment. So the first thing is to actually give it, give it a name. So store client intent and confirm payments. The thing we are going to do is actually, I created um, multiple variables here, but I will recreate them with you so that you can um, see how it works. Okay, so let's delete them. Okay. So the first one, is actually the client intents. Uh, Stripe client intent. Um, and this is an object where we'll start the whole um, payment, sorry, uh, of the user so that we are able to um, bring it back uh, to the on the success page. So I will set it as an object 
and I will save in local storage and preserve on navigation. And what I will do now is I will do um, store, uh, sorry, confirm payment. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> so this is an action to confirm the payment that was made uh, with the form. So we can select the form, uh, the Stripe payment form on the page, and then the redirect page will do um, payment success. By the way, it's payment success with two C's, so my bad. Okay. And um, the only thing we need to do first is actually change the variable value. And um, you know what? The client intent doesn't need to be an object, it just needs to be a text because we just need the ID of the client intent because we'll get it back on the success page. So I will set it as text. I will change the variable value of this client intent to the current client uh, secrets ID, which is on the page. And then I can do my confirm payment. So just testing my workflow right now. Okay. And then confirm payment. You can number this incomplete. Yeah, obviously, forgot the main element. It's going back into preview mode and entering my card details. So because this is Stripe test data, you can use their fake uh, credit card with the which is 4242 and then enter anything you want here and create create a fake payment. So let's go back on my workflow to be sure it works and test it. Okay, so it's redirecting, it works. It's redirecting to my success page. Now my success page is uh, useless because I, I have my client intents, but from this client intent, I need to retrieve it from Stripe to know the current um, status of it. Like, is it succeeding? Uh, was it stuck or something? So what I will do is that I will create a page workflow where I get back this client intent, retrieve, client intent. Then on page load, I will use the retrieve um, payment intent. Yeah. And as the client secret, I will use the client secrets that was um, stored inside my variable. If I test it, I get by the payment intent. Nice with the status succeeded. So now what I can do is that I can store this whole payment intent into another variable. So let's create it. Let's call it Stripe Payment Intent, which is an object, and let's store it again. And then let's do a change variable value on this variable. And let's bind it to the results of the previous action. So now my whole payment intent is inside the WeWeb variable, so I can do stuff like binding the text and say things like your payment and go back inside this variable, get the status, succeeded. And now my whole process is fully dynamic. So to get back on it, I here redirect create a payment intent redirect uh, with the right user and the right uh, price, redirect to the Stripe payment form, confirm the payment intent when the form is submitted, and redirect to the success page, which will retrieve back this payment intent and store it into a variable and display it. And by the way, what you can do to avoid having your payment um, undefined is also on this binded conditional rendering to the fact that the payment intent object is not empty. So if it's empty, let's set it to false. Otherwise, let's set it to true. Okay, so the text won't be displayed if the payment is undefined, but only display when the payment intent is retrieved. And that's how you 
get a full um, payment workflow using Stripe inside Stripe Elements inside WeWeb.